The bear market is here. Welcome to part one of the Sunday chart show. We look at the technicals of the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, Russell 2000, and junk bonds. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today as we kick it off with the S&P 500. We're going to look at a breadth indicator, the percentage of S&P 500 stocks above their 50-day moving average. When a stock or an indice is above its 50-day moving average, that is a bullish trend. When it's below, it is a bearish trend. And here you can see it's sitting at a mere 27.6% of the S&P above its 50-day moving average, suggesting that things are very bearish for the S&P. Looking back, we can see we've seen these levels before back in late September going into October we saw them in late February and into early March we saw them right at the end of April and now we're seeing them again and I want you to notice that the reason people buy these is simply because it usually works you notice here back in October people came in they bought the dip stocks rallied they bought this dip stocks rallied they tried this one didn't get much and so it suggests that perhaps we're entering a bear market and that's what the percentage of S&P 500 stocks above their 200 day moving average would tell us. When you have a small number of stocks above their 200 day moving average, it is very bearish. This tells you you're in a bull or bear market. And in this case, less than 35% of the S&P 500 is above its 200 day moving average. And that is extremely weak and it's getting weaker. Last time we saw this was in the middle of March and what happened, price rallied. People are going to buy these every time because they believe that this is a dip buying opportunity. But historically, what happens if it's not? Well, that 30 5% range can get down into the 20% range. We've seen that happen in 2015, 2016. We saw it in 2008 before the bottom fell out and went to less than 5%. So keep in mind, if this doesn't hold, well, we're just at the beginning phase of a bear market. Let's look at the momentum indicators. We have the relative strength indicator. We're looking for a number of 40 or above to show the momentum is strong and rising it's just under it's 38 it's trying to rally back and push higher here buyers are coming in again every day throughout the day they're trying to push this higher they believe this is a fantastic opportunity but with the fed drain liquidity may not be there the macd the moving average convergence divergence or i like to say crossover strategy because what you're worried about and what you care about is when the macd the black line crosses either positively or negatively through the signal line which is a red line here and what do we see of course the macd is telling us downward pressure there so we have two momentum indicators suggesting that things are not good and well when we tack on the third from momentum timer pro which amazingly is still free and i'm still not sure why it takes the best out two out of three indicators a, a 40 or higher in the rsi a positive cross in the macd or its own internal signal if two of them confirm you've got a buy signal last 18 days you're seeing a sell signal what we can tell on the one three and six month indicator it is in a downtrend so if you are trading based on these signals, when the sell signal flips to buy, keep your tight, your stops tight because you're trading a downtrending market. I'll put a link up in the corner and the description below. If you're not signed up, it's free. Next issue is coming out on Monday and there is a guidebook. So if you're not sure how to use it, be sure to check that out. Let's look at the longer term indicators. We've got the 21, 50, 100 day moving average trending down. Momentum on them is weakening, falling. It's below all the key moving averages. Momentum looking back over the last nine months, the price is negative on those intervals. Let's take a look at the charts because I want you to see how this thing's breaking down. We're gonna look at the SPY. We're on a two year chart with the volume profile. You see heavy selling right here at 435. That means sellers dominating above. What you see in these purple lines these are supply zones and right now the right in here this is where buyers are at and buyers are starting to fade out as sellers dominate putting the next supply zone down here at 390 and then we have to draw in some new ones there's a little bit of weakness here around 370 before you get down to 336 and why these zones flip from a buy zone to a sell zone is because when people start losing money they start pushing the sell button and you can see a very beautifully designed this defined top you've got the 200 day moving average acting as resistance the 50 day moving average trending down the 100 day moving average acting as resistance as well everything pointing to the floor looking to fall out of stocks in the near future let's go on to tech stocks which are brutally getting beat up here we see the percentage of the nasdaq 100 above their 50-day moving average mere 13 percent in the past again october we've got 
uh, into January, February, March. We've seen these levels before and people bought them. They bought this one. They bought this one. They bought this one. And they are buying this again like crazy. They believe that, of course, this is a buying opportunity as breath weakens and they're looking for a reversal. Usually plays out pretty well. But look at the percentage of NASDAQ stocks above their 200 day moving average. And clearly the NASDAQ 100 is in a bear market because only 17% of stocks are above their 200 day moving average. We haven't seen this level in the last year and historically well that means we could actually see this thing get down to a sub five percent level if this doesn't hold i mean the next level of breadth is actually 10 percent of the nasdaq which isn't much left i mean you, you've got 17 percent above 200 day moving average that means only a small percentage have to fall below to drop down and then the floor comes out stock prices go down not a pretty picture and the RSI not offering any any help here below 40 sitting at 37 momentum looks to be weaker it's not oversold yet. it's not down to 30 how about the MACD it's not signaling any sort of bottoming or potential cross coming it's saying from a tactical perspective more weakness momentum time row 19 consecutive sell signals it is telling you no none none and none on the one three and six one it's telling you it's in a defined downtrend remember if the sell flips to buy and you trade it keep your stops tight when you're trading downtrends how about from the bigger picture well moving averages are going down momentum is down below all of everything i mean it's just this is a brutal ugly picture for the nasdaq 100 let's take a look at qqq you can see another beautifully designed looking top here this is gorgeous you look at this and you say what is a topping pattern well it looks like this uh, where you see prices starting to come down it's below and acting as resistance the 200 day moving average you see the 100 day again in blue acting as resistance the 50 day acting as resistance and now the 21 day here in red also acting as resistance you can see sellers dominating here on this two year uh two year chart right here at 338 telling you the nasdaq its first line of defense on the qqq is 291 but really you're talking about 275 top is about to break out i mean you if you think it hasn't broken yet we're in the early stages of where this thing can go how about for small caps do they offer any hope and the answer is well, no, only 16% of the Russell 2000s above its 50 day moving average. Again, why do people buy these? Because they think the price is low and they want to buy below the 50 day moving average and they do. And sometimes they get a boost. This time you'd almost think liquidity is being drained. How about the bigger picture? And it's ugly. You see 17% of the Russell 2000 above its 200 day moving average. It's completely in a bear market. Nothing is slowing this train down except a massive rug pull that's waiting to happen. And you could easily see this thing get down to under 10% of itself above the 200 day moving average. Still got a little ways to go before it's really, you start thinking about a buying opportunity. So it's not there yet, but it could be coming pretty soon. How about the RSI? It's still not oversold. You see all this selling, still not driving it down, still not even giving you a tactical picture of where to buy. How about the MACD? Looked like it was gonna flatten out last week and try to make a cross and then it just, turned down so no sign there momentum time pro 21 consecutive sell signals clearly defined downtrend again if you wait for the sell to flip to a buy and that's where you want to enter that would be what you would look for but remember in a downtrend keep your stops tight 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 all right let's look at the bigger picture of course we already know this thing is ugly and we see 21 day 50 day 100 day moving average alternating now momentum all negative you see below all the key moving averages all the momentum screens are broken how about iwm where are you let's find you there it is and we need to zoom out on this chart because the bigger picture of iwm is going to unwind all of this big move here you can see the five-year volume profile right here around 155 this this is very thin volume see how there's just nobody holding this up all this has to do is continue to break down break down break down the real selling hasn't even begun and if it doesn't hold this five-year mark when it gets down there, watch out below. But see, you can see the 200-day moving average here in tan, 100-day moving average 50 in blue, 50 in green, all providing resistance to the upside. This is a topping pattern that just actually hasn't broken down. It looks like it, but it's not there yet. Uh, you selling will get much worse as this goes down how about hyg junk bonds uh, these are leading indicator of liquidity crisis still not oversold despite 
prices going down, people still buying the dips. So sitting at 36, how about the MACD? Looked like it was gonna cross, looked like it was gonna give people the opportunity up here. It didn't, gets rejected, heading lower. How about uh, Momentum Time Pro? Well, when you sign up, uh, you'll get the report on Monday, it'll tell you. Uh, of course, this picture has not changed in weeks. It is bearish across the board. Let's look at the price chart because HYG is telling you there's a massive liquidity crisis coming. And where is it? There it is. Here you can see prices on junk bonds at 77.59 on HYG. I mean, this is where before we were in the middle of the pandemic. If we zoom out even further, you can see these levels are, when did this happen? 2016, we almost had a massive bear market there. Going back here, we were in the great financial crisis. Nobody's looking at this. Nobody thinks it's gonna get worse. But I'm telling you, if this trend continues, something is going to snap and snap hard in the markets and that won't be pretty for the broad equity market. All right, so with that, let's uh, wrap today's uh, part one up and I'll see you soon for part two. I'm Steve Van Meter, thanks for watching, bye now.